Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be taking a look at a lesson in leverage and redirecting force. So this is not the first challenge that I cover. The first one was uh, Americans challenging Koichi Tohei, which was one of Ueshiba's students or the founder of Aikido students. And he resorted to a lot of judo. Uh, I covered the fight in an old video. I'll link it at the end. But today we're going to be looking at Robert F. Kennedy's bodyguard challenging Gozo Shiyoda. Now this was more of a uh, power challenge and the way he handled it was absolutely brilliant. Now it doesn't mean that it's not a fight or we cannot take anything from it, but it's not a full-on randori in a sense or sparring. So the story dates back to 1962. Uh, it was when Robert F. Kennedy visited Japan and there when he met Gozo Shiyoda, his nickname was Godlike. So he did a demonstration and he was somewhat skeptical of it, or of the art, because of how people were easily just flying around. So he sent his bodyguard to uh, challenge him. And from there, it was just a basic a way of holding him down. And the bodyguard could not do it. And Shioda was basically doing the what we call the Kokyoho exercise and look at how the bodyguard just simply collapses and All he had to do was just grab him and keep him down and uh, He gave a really silly excuse that he skipped breakfast and he wasn't at his best because after his that his ego was clearly shattered now uh, let's take a look at the Samurai Spirit documentary. It was on Aikido, this episode. It's a cool documentary. It is available on YouTube. So um, here he explains um, when someone grabs you, for example, and they're giving you a downward force, you can exploit the gap uh, between the thumb and the fingers. And from there you rotate and you take your hands upward because now you're redirecting the force and using leverage. So uh, whenever someone grabs or grips, there is that gap, uh, especially bigger the arm, the bigger the gap. So uh, this is where you can uh, create your ex uh, escape or pry open uh, that uh, grip. So here, let's see it uh, in Aikido. Um, so you have double wrist grip, you rotate and then you exploit that gap. And from it, you take your hands upward and then you steer to the side, much like Shioda did and what they do today in the Kokyoho exercise. So do not fight force with force. This is the uh, goal of it, or this is the principle behind it. So you cannot fight a downward force with an upward force. That's just almost impossible. But if you redirect it, you can. So again, these are some of the uh, principles taught in old jujitsu, um, like the Koryu jujitsu and they made their way to Aikido. Now, Aikido, you can see a lot of the old self-defense techniques. Um, if you see any old jujitsu books, you would see it's a randori section and self-defense techniques. Self-defense techniques would usually be on their knees or standing up or uh, a lot of grips such as this one. Now, um, the challenge was very unique. It wasn't a fight. It was just you know, a way to hold him down, but he couldn't do that. And uh, based on my own experience and of course from the old jujitsu masters someone coming and, and gripping both your forearms it's not uncommon it's very common school kids I can tell you from my experience they do it all the time it's been done to me and I've seen it again so many times so uh, these principles are very important to learn regardless of what you train boxing uh, savat judo jiu-jitsu etc these principles that are found in the self-defense uh, curriculum in all jiu-jitsu they should still be taught uh, in my opinion if you look at the valente brothers for example uh, old old gracie jiu-jitsu that's uh, you know pretty much what uh, maeda taught uh, ferro and all these others you can see that it had a lot of these principles uh, and then of course the randori but um, the idea of this video is, you know, it's a redirection of force, leverage, and of course, 
you know, basic self-defense. We can look at them and just laugh. You know, nobody's going to hold you like that. But in reality, some, a lot of people, they just simply do. Because we're so used to, to looking at really great uh, judo techniques and jujitsu submissions and uh, MMA. And then we, when we come back to these very basic, basic things that just your common uh, assailant or attacker or whatever or school bully would do, we just look at them at, at, at being somewhat unrealistic. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not the case. We should always reflect on them. They were put there and preserved for a reason. And me, you know, generations later, more than a century later, experienced them frequently or saw them frequently, it would tell you that they have a lot of value to teach. Now, they are not specifically Aikido unique techniques. They are found uh, everywhere. So uh, a lot of the uh, Aikido techniques are just simply jujitsu techniques, uh, but uh, focused more on the philosophy of or demonstrating the philosophy of harmony and then using these techniques that were once used to maim and kill and stab and whatever. Now they are used to create this harmony between your partner because you know the sole idea of it is to create these this harmony or using these uh, war techniques to reconcile the universe. So it's um, it's a very interesting uh, philosophy, and I do not think anyone that has not faced adversity or a lot of fighting would understand it. Personally, the more I train and the more I fight, the more I understand Aikido. But back when I only trained Aikido. Uh, it was very hard for me to, to understand it because all I was looking for is, oh, if I'm gripped like this or attacked from this axis of power, then I'm going to take this to heart and really try to apply this and really work on this. It's kind of like I'm strategizing for randori, but in self-defense in a sense. But now that I've done countless uh, randori sessions and open mats, um, it, the more I understand uh, Aikido, even in randori, the way you let go and you just let it happen so you can just find yourself on your feet again, like Kyuzo Mifune, it's, it's very similar. So again, don't let your perception be uh, fooled by all the professional fighters that you see. It's very similar to all the fitness people that we see on social media, uh, the drugs they take, the Photoshop, etc. So when you see a very balanced, healthy real physique either in front of you in the mirror or uh, someone who's just posting their regular physique online now we, we think of them as weak or skinny or whatever but they can be in fact in very good shape but uh, our perception is just really destroyed from all the you know elite athletes or people who take performance enhancing drugs etc so if you have anything to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening